Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Thank you because somebody's captivity will end today. Thank you because someone's eyes in the spirit will be open today. Thank you because someone will hear the sound of the spirit for the first time tonight. Thank you. Because the fire of the Holy Ghost will cause a separation between light and darkness. This is the secret of God's presence. Always learn to soak in His glory. The glory of God carries power in itself. Create the climate for the Holy Ghost to find expression. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw. I saw because I was in the spirit. I saw because I was in the spirit. Bible says, walk then in the spirit. Just five minutes. Let's breathe the air of heaven. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine. Wear it in excess. He said, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. Lord, we make melody to the Spirit. But the carnal mind understandeth not the things of the Spirit. Because they are spiritually different. Sir. Hallelujah. John 14. Something is happening to your spirit week after week. Something is happening to your mind. See, the word of God is making you in to become something. The word of God is making you to become something. You can't undo it. You have gone too far. I'm telling you, even if you try, there are some of you that cannot backslide again. You can't. The programming has gone too deep. It's like occult. It's like initiation. There is a level you get to that your soul has been sold. That's how it is. You can get into God such that you turn back and will not find the bridge to go back again. 
this is what God is doing to you. Hallelujah. John 14. While I prepared for this meeting yesterday, I was sleeping and the Holy Ghost woke me and he told me that one of the things that will be happening tonight is that there will be accelerated visions and insight into the spirit. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to believe it. And so, regardless, for some of you, what you will hear tonight is not the message. You will be lost in encounters. You will just get the tape later on and find out what really happened. I don't know why, but this is the message of the Lord. And so, Lord, we let you do the things that you will do. Hallelujah. Encounters of the Spirit. When your eyes are open and you see things in the Spirit, there is a level of conviction that you have that no one can take it away from you. Hallelujah. I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I saw. Tonight you will see, Lord. I pray the prayer that Elisha prayed for his servant that his eyes will be opened and that he will see chariots. That someone here tonight will know that they who are for us are greater than they who are against us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. John 14. Now arise, O oh God, come to your resting place. Solomon prayed this prayer. He said, you and the ark of your might. Let your people know that you are in the midst. 21. He that had my command Commands and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, verse 22, Not is carried, Lord, how is it that thou would manifest yourself unto us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on obedience a more excellent way. You need to listen to what I have to share tonight. Obedience. Colon. A more excellent way. seen a vision of someone in this place. What is this that I see? I'm seeing ropes around your house. I believe this represents captivity and bondage. There's been so much stagnation and pain.
But then I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking with the sword. And it will be a sign. The Lord will touch you where you are as a sign that he's visiting your family. Lord, I pray that your fire power will come upon such a one as a symbol of the things that you are doing in the spirit. And the Lord tells me to be confirmed by a loud noise. A loud noise to give you glory. Thou devil of darkness, let God's people go. Please bring that lady, the one at the back. God made many lights. In the name that is above all names. Beginning from you and the oppression that comes upon you. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. There are two more people. Two more people in this same condition. The Lord will bring you out by himself. For he is the Holy Ghost. Lord, go ahead and I pray that these two people, two people, there are two ladies not when the Holy Ghost is in the house for there is a light that shines brighter than any darkness bring the lady there's one more person three papa toka pariata Bantaka paske patikapa, brando kapate kapaya. Thou devil of darkness, let her go, for you will not hide in the light of God's presence. This is a place of emancipation, for no darkness is able to stand in the presence of His name. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's what you receive when the Holy Ghost. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope, let hope time now you're prophesying to yourself so let hallelujah at the seventh count God will set three of you free and the Lord says the whole congregation to shout it because he wants to teach you how to walk in the anointing so go ahead and let's count seven. One, together. Just watch what is happening. No. Thou 
devil of darkness for you will not stand let the oppression over God's people go let them go the chains of darkness come out of her right now come out of her right now in the name of the Lord Jesus come out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost I command that demon that has tied you and your family let her go now for we are upon Mount Zion where there is deliverance hallelujah I want to use come my dear I want to teach you something about the anointing come you will minister to this lady you believe you are anointed you have the power of the Holy Ghost go and lay your hands on her everybody watch what happens and this sign shall follow them that believe speak go ahead and speak and these signs shall follow anyone anyone that believes anyone that believes freedom now for your family Listen to me. Listen. You're sitting under a kind of anointing week after week, month after month. For some of you, you are not even noticing the transformation that is happening. A day will come. I tell you, you will walk. You will not know the degree of light you carry. You may not even. This is not about ministry, this is light. For when the light of God comes upon you, you will step into darkness and you will command doors that are closed to be opened and you will command doors that are open to be closed. There is an agency of the Holy Ghost. As you listen, there is a programming. Unbelief is dying in your mind. Faith is rising. The audacity of the Spirit is working in you. You may not know because you are not the ones preaching. You're just sitting, you're jotting, you're writing. But then you will begin to see because it won't take long before fruits will begin to be born. Prophesy one more time. Let hope rise. girl for me come come listen to me there are three people God wants to touch sweetheart you are going to declare that in the name of Jesus all right let the Holy Spirit touch those who he wants to touch touch you as this girl prays. It's not about her. I'm teaching you some. Father, I pray. Don't go ahead and say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray the demon is going to come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are going to cover us in the blood of Jesus. Father, I need demons. Father, I need devil standing against us. Father, you are going to us. We are going to bang it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are going to bang our father. Father, you are Pray, thank you for, for uh, Father. I pray you forgive us our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I know we are sins against you. Father, I am going to 
Hallelujah. Do you realize the Lord just changed our message this night? And this time, the Bible says, handkerchief. Handkerchief. Watch this. Everybody, watch this. Please look at this. Everybody, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Just watch this. What is in a handkerchief? What is in a handkerchief? Bring that other lady. Bring this other lady. A handkerchief. No faith. What is in a handkerchief? Please bring the last lady. in a handkerchief what did the demons see what happened to them in the realm of the spirit this was a handkerchief that the protocol brought it was not even my own if a handkerchief can be a conductor of glory of grace and of power somebody help me with your veil somebody who does not know me help me with your veil Welfare. Welfare. Come. You believe you are anointed? Welfare. Go and lay this material. You don't, we didn't negotiate this. Go and lay it on this lady. She's not even seeing you. Just go and lay it on her. What happened? Now, listen, listen. She did not even see her. What, what is happening in the spirit? This is what you must learn. Because the days that are coming will require that we have an accurate understanding of the operation of the spirit. This is what the Holy Ghost is making you become. This is what he's making you become. A sign and a wonder. Blessed is he who Blessed is he Hallelujah. So let's follow what the Holy Ghost wants to do tonight. Mark. Talk on obedience another time. Please sit down. Mark 16. As you rise up from this place, you are free. You will receive amazing testimonies from your families. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world 
and preach, declare, proclaim the gospel unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, that becomes our new message tonight. These signs shall follow them. Who believe? In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. This is a school and the Holy Ghost is training us. We're supposed to become something by reason you sat here last week come two of your names are house names is that correct i may be wrong i don't know whether it's eh? okay you sat down close to Emanuela last week because I'm seeing face a Facebook picture of what the media snapped right now and I'm seeing you sitting close to Ella last week. Please come and stand. God wants to do something in your life. Hallelujah. You believe that? You are standing on holy ground. I'm seeing a river coming out right now. The Lord will ignite you and begin a prophetic work in your life. So Lord, let it be according to your word. Breathe upon her. Set her on fire. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that the Lord will anoint you in a fresh way. That you will cause your eyes to be open again and again and again and again. For you will step into a new realm and a new experience of the Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. The Christian, listen, Christianity without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, without the power of the Holy Ghost, is a dead religion. Are you listening to me? Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come to you in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith will not sit upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Satan has vowed that he will not let you walk into your destiny, that he will not walk, let you walk into the place of the anointing. And so when you get born again, please listen. The Holy Ghost comes into your life. The Holy Ghost does not bring eternal life. He is eternal life. Are you listening to me? And then you begin a walk with the Spirit. He begins to renew your mind. What is the renewal of the mind? Bringing your, your will, your emotions, your intellect to conformity conformity so that they are not at variance with the patterns of the spirit are you following me now and as you begin to comply you see it's one thing to be born again but you can choose whether or not you will continue the journey are you listening to me there are several believers who have stopped at the gates of salvation in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was made of three subdivisions. The first was called the outer court. Hallelujah. The outer court, you met certain things when you entered. You will meet the brazen altar. Hallelujah. And then you will meet the lever for washing your hands. It's a sign of the, the, the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. 
but you can choose to stand outside you didn't need to be pure or clean to come in you just needed to come in are you listening to me but then there was the inner court and when you enter the inner court the rules change are you listening to me because as soon as you enter the inner court then you will find seven candlesticks which represent the perfect ministry of the Holy Ghost according to Isaiah 11 the spirit of the Lord the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord hallelujah and then you have the table of shoe bread that represents the manifestation of the Word of God hallelujah then when you step in into the most holy place in that place there was no light the literal Shekinah of the Lord was the light in that place and that one was not free you had to be qualified to step in listen there is a level of your walk with God that the things you receive from God are just a gift but there are certain contentions of rest in the spirit that is a reward the Bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and are heavy laden and I will give you rest hallelujah But then in the book of Hebrews, the Bible begins to speak that there remaineth another rest for the people of God. He said, let us therefore labor to enter that rest. That one is not free. The manifestation of God's grace switches from being favor into enabling grace. The ability to stand until you enter. Are you learning something tonight? Holy Spirit, please let us see. I really wanted to teach on something. Lord, would you allow us just to... Alright, let's see how we'll connect it. John chapter 1. I don't want to keep us long here. Wherever we stop. John chapter 1. Please change the message again. The living logos. That's a new message for this night again. John 1 verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's read together. John 1 verse 1. 1 to read. In the beginning was the word and the Bible says and the word was with God and that word was God praise God I'm going to be showing you tonight that the word of God is the secret of walking in grace and glory the word of God is the secret but it's not what many people have been taught to be word, word, word. Because that thing they call word, I will show you from tonight's teaching, that is just religious nonsense. That has no ability to transform people. Are you listening to me? Now, the Greek word that was translated word there, please write, Bible studies, is logos. L-O-G-O-S. Logos. We're going to be examining what is the word of God.
because I know many of you are confused right now by what happened here. The Bible says he casted out the devils with what? His word. But then a handkerchief that does not speak comes upon someone. So did, did the demon hear a voice in the spirit? Did the demon see Jesus? Did the demon enter heaven? Did he see fire? What happened? That handkerchiefs and aprons were brought out from the bodies of the apostles. The living logos. Hallelujah. Now logos talks about two things. Let me visit my notes now. Number one. Logos means a thought or a concept. Please write. That's the first definition. A thought. You think about something. A thought or a concept. And the second definition is the expression or the utterance verbalizing that thought the expression so logos talks about a thought something that is in your mind you are thinking about it your ideology and then it also refers on the other hand to an expression of that ideology so that it finds expression please follow me hallelujah so the bible says in the beginning was the logos and that thought that concept that ideology that mindset was locked up in the heart of God and according to scripture as a man thinks in his heart so he is and so the Bible says that thought was as good as God in other words when you begin to interact with that thought it makes you become like the person, um, how do I express it? If you have a way of reading and knowing my thoughts, then you can behave like me so well that people will think I'm the one. Are you listening to me? So when the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. That means as God sits down, there is a mindset that he has. There is a way he's thinking. Are you listening to me now? And holy men listen to me inspired by the holy ghost who is the only one who has the ability to search the mind of god wrote down these thoughts or the concept it means the principles and the mindset please follow me the word of god is not just genesis exodus leviticus number I know I'm going to shake a little religion here now. Let it go. Praise God. When we talk about the word of God, the logos of God, we're not just talking about, um, we're not just talking about, uh, a book that contains information about God. We're talking about, the mindset, the principles of God. Are you listening to me? And so, when you begin to study the Bible, what you first encounter is a particular mindset. There is a way God responded. There is a way he dealt with people. There is a way he manifested. Are you listening to me? And as you begin to interact with his thoughts, an impartation comes upon you so that you now begin to frame your mind according to the mind of God at that point you do not just have the word you are becoming the word are you listening to me because the Bible tells me that the Lord is alert and active Jeremiah 1 12 watching over his word to perform it but then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. 
I need you to get this. This is a big secret. Just follow me. So the logos of God refers to his thoughts, his mindset, his ideologies, his ways of doing things, the way God reasons. His ultimate purpose is to bring many sons into glory. And so to do that, he begins to train you to think like him. Hallelujah. When you go to Shika, even if everybody in Shika wears short nika, you'll be able to know who is a doctor because there is a mindset. Are you listening to me? If someone collapses here, all we know is prayer. We're getting into prayer straight. But the doctor has, he has been given a mindset. Are you listening to me? The medical practice has a mindset. Now when the doctor comes into that system, what happens? Certain lecturers begin to give that student a mindset. Are you listening to me? The first thing is they let the student know that you should respect cadavers. Because they will give you opportunity to learn. And then while you are running away from dead bodies, the doctor knows that this is his friend for the remaining six years. Are you following me now? I'm not a medical student, so whatever I say, just accept it. Don't take the message to your classroom. Take it for your spiritual life. Are you listening to me? That's a mindset. So someone who used to be afraid of blood and dead bodies come to a point where it becomes a normal thing. If we bring a dead body here, many of you will wait outside and say, I will pray from there so that whatever happens, I can easily say I was not there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then they teach them how to hold a syringe. As tiny as a syringe is, doctors can come to a point where you see somebody's hand who is twice as big as me. He will hold a little syringe and, and he will enjoy you with it. I mean, he just puts it, he knows where he will find and he won't kill you with it. If you give me a syringe now to give you an injection, I will tell you, let's do it during miracle service. But the doctor, listen, please. Are you following me now? So, he's reading it from his textbook, but it's becoming part of him. Are you getting me? The goal is not for him to be a good crammer. The goal is that one day, he will become an expression of that textbook. Are you following me, please? The living logos. So, God's ultimate goal is not that one day you are able to recite scripture. But that the word of God that you are interacting with, you become the manifestation of it. Are you following me now? So the word of God is God and any other thing that can have the thoughts of God. Hmm. Are you listening to me? The mindset the principles of God. So you begin to study from scripture that every time God wants to bless a man, God demands a sacrifice from that man. And so you, you look and you say, wow. And then God, you want to change the story of my family. So God says, all right, I'm demanding a seed from you or I'm demanding then an act of sacrifice. Because you have interacted with the word of God, your spirit will not resist his dealings. Are you listening to me? And you can step in and act and then you, are, you get the results. So the first revelation of God's word, I need you to get this. Because a lot of people pride themselves. Now it's good for us to be good Bible students. A lady sent me a text that she wanted to recite some verses. When I saw the number of verses, I said, can I recite this myself? I said, that's interesting. So we'll give her an opportunity to do that next week. It's wonderful. Charles Finney's Dix knew the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Up hard. Yeah, up hard. Praise God. But he never held the kind of Benihim crusade. Now that's not to mock him. His Dake's Bible has blessed us. But I'm telling you that 
it must translate beyond this. This is why you stand and look at a demon-possessed person and your memory just goes to a scripture and you look and say, in the name of Jesus. So if, the, if it was written in your language, you probably speak your language. And now, what the demon, what moves the demon is not I-N-T-H-E. Are you listening to me now? N-A-M-E-J-E-S-U-S. No. Because there are people who don't pronounce Jesus in English and demons still go out. Correct? We need to understand this because, see, when the apostles walked, I hope you know that there was no Bible as we know like this. There were only the scrolls, the law, and the prophets. And it was not given for public consumption. It was kept in the temple. Luke chapter 4, the Bible says when Jesus came to read, for to read, it was given to him. Are you following me now? And after he read it, he returned it back. You don't have it this way. So, I have a question. What did the apostles call their word of God? Because what we read today that we call the word of God was their experience that has been recorded. So in their days, when they said the word of God is quick and powerful, what were they saying? Because they didn't quote scriptures as fluent as we, they only had the Old Testament. The only time they quoted scripture was when they were explaining truths either to the Jerusalem council or and there was no reference of quoting scripture near I may be wrong any demon possessed man but we polish our English and speak NIV and we move to new living translation I adjure you by the ability of him who is seated go out and the demon looks at you what are you saying The word of God is not the grammar of God. Are you listening to me? The word of God is not the eloquence of God. It's not the oratory of God. It's the thought, the mindset of God. So, listen to me. The mind of God concerning Pastor Alpha is that Pastor Alpha walks in the full knowledge of the Lord and the blessing of God. And if any demon comes and is impeding that movement, what happens? I know the mind of God concerning this person. And so, I'm not just speaking verses. I am enforcing the mind of God. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Alright? To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, and bringing every high thing that exalts itself above. What was the scripture? I can't remember what I was. Where am I? Genesis. The weapons of our warfare are not. I quote scriptures from my spirit. I told you this already. Some of you don't know where it is. Somebody said, James, I just go I said, thank God. Read your Bible. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of strongholds. Then he said, casting down every yetzah, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. He said, bringing every other thought, every other word, every other pronouncement. That means Satan has his word too. He has his thought. He has his version of the logos. Are you listening to me? And so he tries to bring it above Christ. So when you stand with God's word, one of the ministry of that word is you suppress the mindset and the expectation of Satan over some. Are you getting me, please? It says, if logos is thought, that means it's the thoughts of a man. Satan has his own thoughts. Man himself has his own thoughts. Is that correct? That's why the Bible says there are many voices. So, when you come to the point where Philippians 2 verse 5 becomes a reality, it says, let this mind, 
in other words there are many minds there are many kinds of permit me to use the word logosis but he said let this mind there are many books that have been written many people read different books are you listening e almost every religion has a book that is their logos are you following me now once you read the book it gives you the mindset of the person who the book is about is that correct when we're in secondary school there's this physics textbook called piano kk if you didn't cheat during your ssc let me see if you read that book hallelujah even if you cheated your yeah, god has forgiven you <laughs> see the number of people that said amen <laughs> hallelujah now listen there are certain students who read that book so much that if you are giving them a definition they'll tell you the page number have you seen people like that they say Abba, i know it there is even another one check the summary there is one statement you miss and then this is listen listen don't just get excited for nothing i'm communicating something to you they are interacting with the thought of that professor correct to the degree to which they sufficiently stay there they will begin to use his kind of mindset to analyze have you seen people that analyze things like that My physics teacher in secondary school was a very interesting man. He was so into physics to the point that when the assembly is going on and we have a test, once it's 7 o'clock, he just leaves us and enters the lab. He writes his question, sits down in the class and says, start. And he's excited to the point that he will use this Winston Bridge and try to play guitar and just be dancing. There's nobody writing the test. Will come late once it's exactly time you say submit your papers, even if there's nobody in the class. The last person who that's how he believed and he was come. I don't know what he read. So God has a thought, a mindset. All right, holy men, listen to me. Holy men decided to write this by the inspiration of the holy spirit so god's ultimate desire for you is not to be able to quote galatians galatians what 220 but for you to become an expression of it you get me because if you can quote it and you are not an expression of it then there are many unbelievers who attended mission schools and attended and did bible quiz there are many people who have demons inside them and they were part of the delegates that were sent to represent states in Bible club. They quoted the scripture that would have brought the, dev the devil out and they got award. Are you listening to me? So the logos is not just the, the grammar, but understanding that there is a mindset that you are supposed to get. Are you listening to me now so let this mind be in you permit yourself to come into oneness and conformity God has a mindset there is a way he's thinking when God looks at a sick person there is a way he thinks when God looks like at an oppressed family there is a way he thinks are you following me now when you begin to interact with the world when you look at a sick person you will think just the way he would have thought so he can freely respond through you the way he would have responded if he were there. The degree to which you come into that alignment is the degree to which we say you have the mind of Christ. Please, are you listening to me? Put that as equation one. Let's go to the next subject of discussion. The utterance. This is the one that is very important. The utterance. Logos as the expression. Watch this. Um, if I have a picture of a particular cloth, you can't know it. It's only me that has it. Is that correct? 
But if I tell you, bring me a biro, bring me a paper, and I draw, what happens? I have given that thought expression. Is that correct? Or if I look at you, and I say, I want to eat pounded yam, what happens? I've given my thought an expression. If you're eating pounded yam and I want to, I want to eat, I can nurse it as a thought, and I can swallow one cup of saliva and be looking at you, and wishing that my thought will find expression. Correct? If by any reason I summon courage, and I say, please, before you finish this food, is there any possibility of joining you? What have I done? I have given my thought expression. Whether by speaking, by drawing, by molding, artists give their thoughts expression. Do we have people in the department of art here, please? Nobody? Ah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And so, someone sits down and begins to have a thought in his heart. He wants to write a song and he begins to utter it. Oh, 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 oh. Then he writes it. Then later on, there is a way he wants to put it. Then another inspiration comes. Heaven, heaven on earth. What is happening? His thoughts are coming alive because he's giving it expression. The beauty of any thought is that it be made known. Are, are you following me now, please? So, when he finishes everything and he sits down, he finds satisfaction. And then he worships him, starts, uh, worship team starts singing. Oh, 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 heaven, heaven on earth. Oh, 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 now, the person's thought is that I will write a song that reflects heaven. Are you listening to me? So that when the listeners get... To hear the song they will see a combination of skill and they will know god more this is his thought correct now he began to find ways of giving that thought expression and he decided to use music as the vehicle to express that thought are you listening to me now so the satisfaction of the writer of this song is that when you are singing it the effect he predicted that should happen to you is happening are you listening to me? The moment you are singing, I say, Something's moving, something's changing, sees glory, feels like heaven on earth. The moment you see people getting up and they are really moving, I mean, things are changing. You see people dancing. The person who wrote that says, See my thought in action. They have become my thought in action. It first started from me, but it has translated and entered them. It, Lord, help us this night. Is somebody getting this? You can get the tape and listen again. But I'm showing you a very powerful revelation. So, the goal of God is not that you look at him and say, Oh, Micah Stampley, great job. You will forever give him the credit. Alright? But the worship team can learn this song and go and sing it in Ibadan. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh. even with his voice heaven it has now become their thoughts are you listening oh, oh, oh are you following me now please heaven and in ibadan they see people jump the same way something's moving something's changing are you seeing now it started from the thoughts of a man he found a way to give that thought expression why so that people can see what he's thinking please are you are you listening to me now they interact with that thought so much that it now becomes their own thought and they run with it and reproduce the result that he desires. If you are confused, then you are following me properly. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not our job to confuse you. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says, listen, in the beginning was the word. Wherever that is, the realm of the spirit. We cannot relate to that statement. Correct? And the word was with God. And that word was God. And then the Bible says, he, ah, a thought, he, 
was with God in the beginning. And what happened? The Bible says the logos of God through the agency of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost turned his thoughts into a cell and planted that thought to grow in a woman to the end that a figure he he would have used a donkey he would have used music are you listening to me but he chose to use a man why because his utmost desire was to redeem men are you listening to me so jesus appears as what the bible says the word what was in the heart of god now became flesh and then it dwelt it was manifest when everybody prior to that time except a few people nobody could predict how god would respond in a particular situation but then jesus comes into the scene the bible says full of grace and truth so god thinks grace and truth that's what is in his heart are you following me now jesus walks to the sick person something's moving something's changing see his glory watch this now he's standing and he says the son of man has authority to forgive sins this was all the thoughts of god how can i forgive and he says jesus express what i am thinking and jesus says this is what my father is thinking right now and the father said you are accurate indeed you are a manifestation of my thoughts are you listening to me so while jesus was walking the holy ghost keeps searching the mind of god and keeps revealing to jesus are you listening to me he trained the mindset of jesus christ so that when he came and there was no fish the father will be thinking in his heart all right tell them to cast their net and jesus gave it expression he said now cast your net why i am the logos of the father the living logos so jesus walked in such alignment to the father when he got to bethesda he saw a man he said for how long have you been here and the man said 38 years and then the holy ghost started moving and the father said i want to use that man as an example so tell him to rise up and take up his bed and then the logos finds expression accurately accurately and then when jesus was at gethsemane listen to me for the first time jesus was tempted to disalign and not become the logos in reality he said father i have done ever, i have expressed your thought with so, so much accuracy but as a man right now there is so much pain is there any possibility of you just keep thinking what you are thinking but can you not follow another route but he remembered i'm logos nevertheless not my will but your will be done are you listening to me the expression so the word of god gives the mind So if I take a handkerchief, please listen. If I take a handkerchief and I lay my hands upon it and I drop it upon something, I permitted this handkerchief based on the authority I have over it as a man. Are you listening to me? To align with what the father would want to do. And so the same way demons would have rest, whether it's my hand, my leg my shoe my handkerchief the exact same way the word of god the apostles will say is the word that casted out that devil are you listening to me and so jesus is about to go and he says i will not leave you comfortless hold on something is about to come the same Holy Ghost that made Jesus Logos, living, active, now comes upon the believer and says, trust me, I can make you like Jesus. Just trust me. Then 
he begins to lead you through experiences are you seeing the harmony of the written principles of God and the word the Holy Ghost does not come to contradict the word he comes to give it expression in your life I have found my servant David and I have anointed him and the Holy Ghost will say I did that to David let me do it to you and he says lead me to the path and he begins to lead you the same way he led Jesus Christ then one day he will now tell you tell that guy on the wheelchair stand up you say me say you are already becoming the manifestation of the word come something's moving something's changing sees the living logos that's why we say God suddenly this guy is shocked and saying me are you are you following me now he's becoming he's not just full of the word he's becoming a manifestation of that logos so you become a true kingdom citizen to the degree to which you are able to align with the mind of Christ. This is why the Holy Ghost is priceless. Are you listening to me? Because there are certain details you may not find exactly in the Bible. So you are lost as to what God would want you to do. Then the Holy Ghost tells you, I can continue that ministry. For instance, there is nowhere that is written that he and I in the Bible should have 21 days prayer and fasting. So the Holy Ghost searches the mind of God and says at this point, this is what God wants. And the degree to which you are be, you are cooperating with the word. You say, let it be on earth as it is. You see the prayer of Jesus. He said, when you pray, tell the Father that let it be done in the earth exactly as it's in the heavens. So when you become a Christian, you don't just get any job the way you want. It's not just the salary. You go back. You see where prayer becomes serious. Because we pray not just to receive breakthrough. We pray first and foremost because we want to walk in the accurate thought of God for that moment. So you are praying. And then a job comes, 150,000. But then you search. And God says, uh-uh, that's a nice job. But it's not consistent with what I'm doing. And you tell them, well, this is a nice job, but I'm working with the word. Are you listening to me? So when you say the word works, change it from W-O-R-K eh, to W-A-L-K. The word works. The word works. That's why there is a performance. It can follow us from our room and come to Koinonia and perform wonders. It can follow us to Mina, perform wonders. Follow us everywhere, perform wonders. Are you listening to me? Now, the Holy Ghost does not come into your life to tell you choose the Bible or choose me. This is what I want to balance. Are you listening to me? Because there are many believers who believe that all there is is walking with the Holy Ghost and they throw away the Bible. Have you seen people like that? You don't read the Bible, you don't do anything. When you are hearing the Holy Ghost talking to you and when you are reading the principles of God's word, it's exactly the same thing. You see that? Because both Jesus and the Holy Ghost are helping you confirm to the Father's intent. So whether the word be written, whether the word be spoken, the most important thing is that that logos finds expression. Are you listening to me? So for you, you may not hear the Holy Ghost saying, leave that job. But a scripture can come into your spirit. And then you open the Bible and see that David departed from so, so, so place. And for you, that becomes a revelation of the thoughts of God for you. Are you listening to me? So when you say the ministry of the word and the spirit, many of you just think, okay, the ministry of the Bible, which on its own can bless me. Then the Holy Ghost different can bless me. No, there is a harmonious walking. The Holy Ghost comes to amplify the word to the end that they together, written and spoken, will guide you to be a manifestation of the thoughts of Christ. 
are you listening to me if God or if Jesus Christ is the logos and the Bible says as he is so are we that means God's goal is that we also become a manifestation of that logos this is the secret of walking in power so not only have you crammed scripture you are conscious of the fact that the father is always thinking what is he doing so on Friday what is God thinking for koinonia a miracle service so in the place of prayer while I'm praying I'm allowing the Holy Ghost to scan to and God will tell me I'll be focusing on healing cancer I'll be focusing on healing HIV are you getting that now that's the reason why you can tell a demon go is there a scripture like that not necessarily aside from, I'm not there is no chapter of the Bible called go but the demon will leave because the thought of God for that man came to bear so if a handkerchief can accomplish that the result will be the same you get my point God needed to stop Balaam hear me from going to go and cause the nation of Israel what happened every human agent here was not in alignment and God said I have to move through a donkey logos suddenly the donkey spoke to the prophet come question so is there a possibility that if men will not praise him he will use another medium he will raise up stones you get me now he said look there are many mediums I can use to express my thought and if you men are not ready to praise me it is within my power to raise up stones and create a capacity in them to respond to my thoughts something's moving sees glory listen to me God had a thought about the way the Sun will rise and set and what happened he used his word to speak his thought and from that day till today the galaxy has been obeying his word now Satan enters the cosmos and is trying to change the thoughts of God into his thoughts you see that that's what is causing the cataclysmic things and the rest Satan is trying to impose and the Bible says bringing every other thought so when you pray there are many thoughts that are tempted to make you act like them when someone is possessed with a devil what happens a spirit uses him as a medium so he can use a cat in the night it can use an owl just anything are you listening to me the most important thing is to find a medium so your the native doctor in your village becomes the manifestation of that demonic word and she comes out and holds a stick and like the living logos she says let there be death in this land because she is a medium communicating the thought of satan what happens things begin to change so when a son of light steps into the territory god says hallelujah finally have gotten somebody who can communicate my thought then what happened satan deceives the person to start looking for money and god is saying what is all this i spent all the time to bring you so that you can come in. you see how many men are disappointing god and suddenly this man wants to be an expression of god's thought then one woman comes to carry him now the guy is disaligned god is there he's here god says turn right he said god says squat down now he's so disaligned that's the state of the current church in nigeria there is so much disalignment that oneness we are not a perfect expression of the thoughts of god are you listening to me so we have many prophets but nobody can tell us the future of boko haram nobody can tell us what is happening in the country nobody can give us inspiration and direction but we can prophesy your pocket that's the degree to which when it gets to finances we align quickly to the holy ghost and then he communicates that we have refused to allow him to prune us and deal with us so that we come into a point where we become territorial influences but as many who will allow themselves you see that and subject yourself through prayer through the disciplines of the spirit you come into alignment so you study the word of god to gain understanding of his principles see the word of god from today like a textbook are you listening to me 
Your physics textbook makes you a physicist. Your chemistry textbook makes you what? A chemist. The word of God makes you what? The manifestation of the living logos. So the word of God is the textbook. Newspapers cannot make you become the manifestation of the word. Are you listening to me? So I cherish my Bible because in it is the capacity to cause me in partnership with the Holy Ghost to come to a point where I become the manifestation of the word of God. So I can be walking on the street and suddenly a demon sees me there and starts moving back. What did the demon see? A degree of alignment. And God designed it in such a way that every time you align, he releases the anointing. Every time you align, he releases the anointing. The anointing he gives you is a testimony. I mean genuine anointing. Are you listening to me? Not stage managed anointing. So he releases the anointing. And then you can stand. You leaned on this place. What happened? A substance of the power of the word of God leaned here. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says when that river flows, anything that was dead comes alive. Now you take your hands and walk away. Someone comes possessed with a devil. The word of God touched this place. So any other thing that touches, the word of God doesn't care who. It has a job. Bring it to the obedience of Christ. This guy touches this table and starts shouting. Why? Because the word of God cannot return until it's sent. Sent does not mean spoken. Sent means somebody moved it from one location to the other. So you move the manifestation of that word. Are you listening to me? You laid your hands here. The word of God touched this place. See, if you have this revelation, then you will know that first you are a carrier of the word. Second, you are in a journey to become the manifestation of that word. It is only at that time. So when I'm ministering to this guy, listen to me. I just stand. And in one minute I see that, Lord, you want to touch someone. And you are seeking a vessel find one in me so the hands of jesus as my hands are coming to him i'm seeing it the father from his throne suddenly you touch someone are you listening to me and then you find him fall under the anointing the same person will hug and jump on your back and nothing will happen to him not necessarily because you have changed but at that point god is not trying to remove and cast anything are you listening to me If you will get this, you will walk in a level of anointing. So, God can do without you. But now that he has chosen that you become an expression of him, will you be faithful? Are you listening to me? You step into your hostel. And the devil is tormenting someone. And the person says, God, can you help me? You just had that, didn't you? So what will you do about it? Because you are supposed to be the manifestation of the logos. And Archbishop Benson will say, Lord, you don't need to come down. I'm here. What a man. We write books about generals. They should come and write generals in Nigeria. Because men did things in this place. And he looks at a man whose face had been beaten. And he told the guy, lift your face to the heavens. The headquarters he said lord this guy was made in your image if this is how your face looks like then leave him like that suddenly a creative miracle happens the word becoming flesh so when a man of god comes into a meeting for those of you who don't honor vessels and say the most important thing is god let me tell you something it is a difficult thing for god to find a vessel that can align so a man steps into a building and changes the climate of that place because he entered with a depth of alignment to the Holy Ghost. And while he's standing as he's speaking, he's communicating. There's how you hear certain preachings. You, you put your hand on your head. You don't even know what is pinching you. You can't tell. It's like fire. It's like hammer. Then you just stand up because you can't even sit down. It's as if they poured hot water on you. Then cold water, the word finding expression because sometimes 
you will see that the English that was spoken was simple and basic. You will try speaking the same thing, even if it's to repeat that thing, and you find out that you're not making any sense because it's not about the English. So you go to a crusade and you are speaking and somebody who may not necessarily be spirit-filled is interpreting it. Are you listening to me? And you say, cripples, stand up. And the guy says, I don't, he says, cripples should stand up in Yoruba or in Igbo or in, in whatever language. And then the cripples just stand up. And they themselves are shocked. They are saying, this is not, I'm, this is a joke. No, 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 no. The word of God found expression through a man. I have found my servant David. Question, how many people were on earth that God will be looking for a man? You see that when God is looking for a man, you get the concept of the man now. God is looking for an aligned vessel who will become an expression. Many times we just sing and say, oh, living logos, oh God, can you begin to see yourself? I know some of you will think it's heresy. How can you say you are a manifestation of the word of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a prophet that calls himself an oracle. Prophets are real oracles. So, to what degree have you become a manifestation of the word of God? The degree to which you have embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing that? The degree to which... If God were to come and preach by himself, the degree to which I have aligned to him, you can calculate it mathematically as the difference in error between what God would have done and what I would have done. Are you listening to me? When the degree is minimal, I have tried. When the degree is wide, Kai, I messed up. You see that? So a preacher, sorry, a preacher begins to pray and says, Oh Lord God, I pray that I will deliver your word with accuracy. What is he doing? He's opening himself to the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, the Holy Ghost says, I want to anoint people from Congo. Correct? And then you call out the people from Congo. Why not those who are staying here? Why not the ushers who swept this place? Because that is what the Father wants to do. And if it is God's mind, there will be a performance. You see that? A performance a performance now listen the Holy Spirit listen listen the Holy Spirit did not tell me to carry a handkerchief and put on this lady are you listening to me but I put the handkerchief anyway and what happened there was a performance so was that an expression of the Word of God yes because the motif was not to display power the motif was to bring you into perfect maturity which is what the written word says is the ministry of the apostles and the prophets so if i comply with that if my demonstration is to achieve that goal god says son you're on target go ahead are you are you listening to me so your father married your mother an unbeliever so the issue of hearing God was out of the question, correct? Father and mother, they met in the beer parlor. And then it so happened that in the process of, of, of ordering the beer, they got married. Praise God. Now, listen, it looks like they have missed out on the will of God. But all hope is not lost. Because the written word can give them a mindset that can still permit the activity of the Holy Ghost to find expression. That's why the Bible says, is there hope for a tree, though it be cut? So, a man of God who marries his wife, and they say, you marry the witch, and he leaves her as a stupid man. Because you need to understand that if you are a true man of God, bring her into alignment. So we have all kinds of prophets who are breaking homes, and they call it the word of God. After having six children, they say, marry a second wife. This woman is a witch. She just, whether consciously or unconsciously, opened up herself to become a manifestation of what? So the woman, nobody is bad in themselves. Are you listening to me? So what happens is by the ministry 
of the power of God. You bring her and then teach her the word of God. Suddenly, after five years, the same witch suddenly stands to become an oracle of glory. Are you listening to me? If you understand that, you know that there is no hope for anybody. There is there's no hopeless situation for anybody. Your brother can take the last bottle of rock as he's taking it because of your intercession. What happened? W what are you doing? You are giving expression. Suddenly, while he's trying to acclimatize to his stupor, he sees an angel. And he says, look at what you are doing to the temple of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, there is an encounter. Your intercessory ministry gave room for the mind of Christ to find expression. Prayer ban, you now see that your prayer is useful because every time you are praying, you are saying, Lord, what you want to do in ENI? Please, let Joshua Selma not be stubborn to disallow. Are you listening to me? So you are praying. You are praying. You are praying. So people will say, prayer doesn't matter. Just speak the word. You see the nonsense they are saying? Because if you understand what the Bible says, you will know that speaking is one of the major tools to express the word, but that's not the only tool. If your lifestyle does not conform, you are still frustrating the word from finding expression. Praise God. God doesn't want you to have HIV. Your mouth is saying, I won't have HIV. But your legs lead you to a place you have HIV. What happened? You are lying to another thought. Result? HIV. Is there hope? Of course, the miracle service. But until then, I'm saying you have aligned to something else. So you see that many preachers are aligning to different things. Somebody just comes and they are preaching all kinds of things on stage. And they say, I bring you a rema from heaven. Uh-uh. Hold on. Don't deceive us. We will know whether this word, because we also have the spirit of God who is searching the mind of God. So if what you are speaking is the mind of God, deep will call on to deep. There will, are you listening to me? There will, have you seen people preach some messages and you, you are not mocking them, but you know that in our, this is not what God signed out for delivery today. This guy carried his old wine from wherever and he's on his own. He may cry, he may sweat, give me another handkerchief. It doesn't matter. To what degree? I'm, I'm teaching you to discern spiritual things. So when somebody comes to your house and tells your father, I'm a prophet, wonderful. The word of God is here to confirm your prophecy. Five days ago, you were at the bank and you withdrew some money. It's at the back of your room. True. But the word of God is searching both the spirit and then the soul where flesh is hidden. The word of God does not just stop in the spirit. It's a discerner of the bones and so he's searching his spiritual intent his solical intent and his bodily intent and at a point you find out that from the spirit this is correct you receive correctly but in the realm of your soul there is a blockage this is not true you are a genuine prophet oh, but this word you gave me i don't receive it please are you learning something the living logos so you become the manifestation of god's word listen Peter knew this. He said, such as I have. At what point did he know he had it? Listen. Where's that handkerchief? I've thrown it away. We're going to pray shortly. Watch this. Do I have this? Do I have a handkerchief? Please follow me. Do I have a handkerchief? Am I trying to guess whether or not I have it? Now, if you ask me, please give me a handkerchief. I said, well... I don't sell handkerchiefs, but such kapatagada. I know I have something. If I say I don't have it, I'm lying. I know I have something. I have something he gave me by grace. That's, that's what I was trying to achieve when I called that little girl to tell her, sweetheart, you have something. When Tolu laid hands, now you have something. When the devil wants to abort your destiny, what do you say? Satan. I have something. When someone looks at you and say you are nobody, say, come on, do you know what you are saying? 
nobody when I am already in progress becoming a manifestation of the world such as I have you can step home and they say bless we're in trouble you say no that language is not in this territory at least I am here relax such as I have let us know what God wants concerning this then you go and lock yourself they say why are you praying you say I'm praying because I want to connect with the headquarters I need to find out what the mind of God is while you are praying God gives you a note of confidence he says relax and you come out and tell your father he told me relax and so you begin to create the conditions that can make them relax and tell all the people that say hey say you can have a nice day please close the gate God has told us relax I am acting as the leading logos Christians listen to me if all we have to do in our life is to quote and just talk it I don't have we will we'll soon stand up and confess the word but your confession must come from a revelation otherwise you are wasting your time you see why some people's prayer life although they are generating energy there is not power because they don't even know what they are doing they are praying because they just want to afflict themselves and console themselves that they are being spiritual praise God I'm the manifestation of the word of God I believe this if I tell you you are blessed I tell you you are blessed if I open my mouth I give his thought opportunity to find expression if I lay my hands upon you and say you are blessed you are blessed why because he told me I will be a blessing so the Holy Ghost must not give me a rema to prophesy to you I can tell you based on the knowledge of his principles as written in scripture are you listening to me the Holy Ghost did not tell us necessarily are you listening to me to raise an offering today we understand that every time it's time to publicize God's work and to do the things of the kingdom we afford people an opportunity to sow and so based on that knowledge of the written principle so both the logos of God as his written thoughts his impressions are you following me now scripture and the logos of God as his revealed utterance together can make you be like Christ do you understand now so your Bible study life becomes richer every time you are reading the Bible hear a voice God is speaking to me so that you finish and say I had a word from God and people say tell us the dream you say no Bible study they say we are looking for a dream because they do not know what the word of God is so somebody can look and say he can say there's somebody here and my father said I should tell you it will be well with you even if God did not say it the spirit I don't need to hear God listen I don't need to hear God to save a sinner correct why because the, the written principles of God tells me that he's, this is desire that no man will perish so at that point God does not tell you that if he doesn't want you to do it for any unique reason he tells you stop just leave the person for an appointed time but until then I will walk with the manifestation of God's word do you believe this please so God does not tell you the lady to marry and you stand up and walk in obedience with God's word and you get a wife and you marry let no prophet talk nonsense to you the logos of God found expression in your life are you listening to me please this is why every time you hear us say Holy Spirit we revere you is because sometimes we cannot find exactly the revealed will of God for today as written in scripture so it must come as what a manifestation of that thought in the utterance of the spirit so when God gives us visions when he gives us his word he's only trying to get himself into the scene using human agents who will permit him praise God two prayer points tonight first we are going to say Lord grant me grace to take your word and the ministry of your Holy Spirit seriously second Lord I offer myself to come into a level of alignment that everything you want in the heavens it will be done in the earth through me rise up on your feet 
never forget this teaching it will bring you to the place of the anointing when you are laying hands on people don't think about yourself think about God flowing through you when you are speaking a word of blessing the word walks w-a-l-k the word walks the word talks so i'm a blessing go ahead and pray say lord i take your thoughts as contained in the bible seriously and i take the ministry of your spirit let there be a generation of men who will walk in signs and wonders I tell you it will work in every area of your life. Lord, I take your word seriously. The next time you study scripture, you're not just trying to feel spiritual. You want to get the mindset of the Father. The next time you go to pray, among other things, you want to download the mind of Christ. Now lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I yield my spirit, my soul, every faculty in my body. Let it become an agency, a medium through which your word will find expression in healing the sick, in blessing lives, in shifting climates, changing territories. Based on that, you can begin to prophesy. I am the word of God manifest. No baby can die in my womb. In the name of Jesus, I am the word of God manifest. I am the word of God manifest to bless the world. Come on, pray. I'm not a nobody. I have something. Can't take a fire. I have something. I have an anointing. I have an ability to cooperate with heaven and let its will be done. Pray. Say, Lord, I align. Let me become a manifestation. A manifestation. A manifestation. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Hear me. Escos, our retreat has started. So, this revelation of the word of God made manifest becomes the basis for character development. Are you listening to me? So, every time you are going to do what is not right, what happens? There is a revelation, a buffer. There is a buffer in your mind that brings you back and says, remember, God is depending on you. Say, God is depending on me. It's not heresy. Say it. Yes. He can use stones, but since he has chosen to use me, oh, such as I have, prophesy to yourself, I have something. We're rounding up. Please say it. I may not have cash in my pocket right now, but I have something. The creative power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing, I'm a blessing. Tell your classmates to rejoice. They are privileged to have you as their classmate. Tell your roommates to rejoice. They are privileged. Tell your family to rejoice. They are privileged to have you such as I have I'm a blessing hallelujah prophesy such as I have the grace to prosper such as I have the wisdom of God such as I have the anointing of the Holy Ghost such as I have the faith of God I can never be discouraged I can never fail prophesy I have something Hallelujah. When I pray in tongues, 
I hear the mind of the Spirit. I'm not stranded. The Holy Ghost speaks to me. I'm a blessing to my family. Souls are saved through me. When I talk, the word talks. When I walk, the word walks. When I stretch my hands, the word is stretching his hands. When I preach, the word is preaching. When I lay my hands, the word of God comes upon that person. Get this revelation and you will walk in signs. And the Lord walking with them, confirming those who have become the word with signs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Hold on. You now understand? I am alert and active, watching over Joshua, my word, to perform him. I'm watching over him to perform. And the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. As they lay hands, he confirms. As they speak, he confirms. Because the Bible says God confirms the word of his message. So the word is not just Bible. It's you who is walking. He said, I am watching. Watching. Suddenly, he sees Joshua Selman coming. He said, praise God. This demon-possessed person can live. Holy Ghost begins to, begin to move. And then because I have aligned, suddenly I start sensing. The word wants to find expression. The word wants to find expression. And the Lord says, lift your hands. And finally, he finds a man. When I lift my hands, God says in his throne, yes, I have saved this person. And because I know, listen, that it's not just me. He has made me become like him. I give him back the glory. But then, you cannot deny the fact that it flowed through you. It's not pride. Are you listening to me? Don't just make it an object of boasting. I say, ah, this, no, 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 no. That's why I can tell you, lift up your hands. And you will lift up your hands and I'll begin to speak. And the power of God is falling. I experimented that with a little girl. You know why? Because her degree of alignment is greater than that of many of you. You see that? She's a little girl. There is not much that she knows. When you start praying for the sick, start with the small children. You accomplish results faster. Hallelujah. Such as you have. This is what we are training you to become. So listen, don't be in a situation. And everybody say, hey. You too, you say, hey, God is saying, is there no man? Is there no man? 430 years, the Israelites were crying. God was saying, just one man. Just one. You see, listen, listen, it is on this basis, God said, touch not my anointed. Because he said, you don't know how hard it took me to find one man and get him to a point that he is aligning. You touch him, I'd rather a nation of unyielded people die than this one man die. Are you listening to me? That's why I told you some people cannot just die anyhow. Although God is mighty, some people have become so valuable. Are you such a person? It is on that basis you can say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. So when a demon looks at you and says you, see, this revelation I'm giving many of you, all these demons and devils that come to oppress people, don't drive them, invite them. And you will see what will happen. Revelation is a door in the spirit. When you catch it, the door of that realm is open up to you. And demons see you and know that you have changed. You came with a new light and they won't oppress you again. Satan has never made me not sleep. Since the days of BZ when he was oppressing me, when I caught the light, 
that not only is God high up there, and I'm saying, hey, 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 God, do something, no. Hey, oh, if you don't do something, no, 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 no. Kabada katabaya, such as I have. He said, you are the light. Jesus said, I am the light. And he said, you are also the light. You are the light. Say, I am the light. I am the light. I'm not motivating you. This is true. So you go and meet. Some of you need to go home and go and meet a project that has been, they've been trying to build for 10 years and just enter and remember the word works. W-A-L-K. The word just entered your uncompleted building and you say in the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, I give you express permission to find expression that the hand of Zerubbabel that has begun this work, that same hand, suddenly the door opens up and blessings come. Next time you see a woman who has not taken in, what do you do? If you come as a man of God, you are on your own. Come as the manifestation of the world. Such as I have. Do you notice that herbalists are confident people? You never come and meet them. They say, Kai, this thing is hard, but we can do something. What is the next thing they do? They start consulting a higher power. They start singing and dancing. And while they are dancing, you are watching. They are dancing, but they are invoking something. You are just watching and say, ah, this guy. But they are dancing. The moment they finish dancing, don't answer your wait. Suddenly, confidence has come because they've had something. And then they look at you. You are 30 years. Yes, sir. Ah, you have three children. Yes, sir. Their confidence came from what? A higher power. So if they have not had the mind of the oracle, they can't tell you anything. This is how we are. Are you listening to me? When you come and meet me, if God does not speak a rema, I will use the wisdom in the word of God to guide you. Such as I have. This is my mindset. I have a very healthy esteem about myself based on this revelation. If there are two people who will be useful to Nigeria, I know it's me and somebody. This is not pride. I know it. Hallelujah. Now, I want to make an altar call. Gone are the days where people just cajole people. You know, when people come like this, I know many of you have heard of the miracles. Many of you will experience it. God wants us to experience it. But let me tell you this. I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers. In fact, most healing evangelists did not cross 80. Yes, it's true. Those who really, really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people. Hallelujah. Now, nothing wrong with miracles. We're going to be experiencing the hand of God shortly. But it came strong upon I've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell. It's not a lie. It's true. Whether you believe it or not, it's not the issue. I can argue that there's no oxygen in the air. It does not stop it. There are some of you looking at me right now. The overflow, the truth of the matter is that at your current state, without missing words, it is true that it is not heaven you are going to. The goal is not to scare you. This is not the issue of scaring. It's, it's the truth. There's nothing to scare you about. It is true. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Listen carefully. Whosoever's name. It's on earth here that we celebrate people, Apostle Joshua Selman. Whosoever's name was not found. He was not asked why his name was not there. If your name was not there, that's the end of it. Are we together? Listen. Look, this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say Jesus I need you I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you heal 
I'm not asking you what name your members call you. Are we together? There are people outside overflow one, two, three. The truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ. And a day is going to come whether we like it or not. That day, the very judge of the earth is coming. It's coming. If he said it in his word, then it is true. Mm -hmm. Come out and be serious with God. Be serious with God. It's amazing how people come out for altar call. They come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious. I'm not saying you must cry, but there is an attitude of seriousness. You don't play games with God. Are we together? I want you to run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is. One. Two. Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life my own life as a man of God I've cried and rolled in the presence of God crying for my own life so don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship three, make your way it's not by force it's not compulsory you can choose to sit down but you can choose to say let tonight be that night Lord you have to win this war over my life Four. the Holy Spirit is still speaking to people you may have money you may have anointing you may have cars but let me tell you this the Bible says if your hope is only in this life you are of all men of all politicians of all businessmen of all men of God miserable there has to be a cry from your heart Lord I need you is a sign of humility is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that, Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none. Leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved, I hope their names are your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, promotion and and there's nothing wrong with that but let me tell you this is is funny but from heaven you will still see your loved ones in hell you will know they are the ones it's not that you are going to look at them and say i don't know i don't it's a lie you will know that this one is my mother this one now you can't do anything about those who have gone but there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything, hook, line, and sinker, just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. 
more than healing, more than miracles, more than getting a job, more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secured. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray, Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me Oh my life Take all a parent here, yeah? when your children get to the age of discretion, the moment they can think and they can understand, lead them to Jesus consciously. It is very responsible. Lead them to Jesus. If you have not done so as you go back home, don't just say my children are smart. Call them. Preach the gospel to them. The moment they, are, they can think, they should be born again. Please, be, take, let nobody stay in your roof. You have a neighbor that is squatting with you. He's not serious. It doesn't matter. No, it does. No, it does. No, it does. They can choose to reject Jesus. That's all right. No one goes to hell because he's a sinner. Everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus. That is the sin that takes men to hell. I rejected him. I had a choice. But I rejected him. Jesus, carry your load and walk out of my life. Those of you in front here, I truly appreciate you. Whatever you have in this life, if Jesus is not above, it is useless. Let me just tell you the truth. I want to lead you in an honest prayer. I know some of you are crying. Overflow. One, two, three. Those online, please listen. I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul. I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees. All those things are useless when you are no longer here. I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Listen to what you are saying and pray it loud. Are you ready now? Say after me with all your heart, passionately, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that my sins are forgiven. I declare 
that the life of God, eternal life, is mine today. Holy Spirit, I receive you as the life of God in my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God forever. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have unashamedly come. The Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father, Jesus speaking. Lord, these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace. I ask you, oh God, you who is the helper of us all, help them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you. The grace to live a victorious Christian life. The grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate every one of you. Now, listen, I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ. There are a number of you, those in here, I just want you to walk out this way. And then the various overflows, I know that there are people attending to them. They will have your details, appraise you very quickly, and you return back to join us in the service. I salute you. Thank you so much for your courage. Your life will never be the same. God bless you. Please direct them. Make sure someone is directing them. Make sure someone is directing them. Hallelujah. Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings, I really believe with all my heart. And, and it's been confirmed from different people, seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth. Number one is the healing ministry. I believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry. It's true. Even some of us that supposedly walk in it, the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry. The healing ministry. I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray, we'll get to the business of the night. The healing ministry is very important. It played a major role. The challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance is true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say i believe that god has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant god releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money. Are we together? The average person's idea about money is just some kind of, um, is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful. There is a place for that, but if that is the scope of your idea, then you do not need any wealth transfer. Are we together? Yes. So God must first walk upon our hearts. It's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria. Angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust. You know, people started having these strange encounters 
And one, I remember one night the Lord told me, he said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people. And so God withdrew that experience. God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment. He knows that when this reality reaches the people, they will not abuse it until now as I speak to you, there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so God will not release it until the body is taught. The money is safer with Bill Gates. It's safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds. They are better treasurers for God than us. So all, it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming, but not, not some money monger kind of thing. It won't come that way. Anyway, I just thought to share that. Let's look at the ministry of Jesus. Luke chapter 6. I study the Gospels a lot because the ministry of Jesus inspires me. He's the greatest model that I have. And I like to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6. Verse 17 to 19. This is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples, a great multitude of people, listen, out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases. 18. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits. So we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings. Those who were sick. They were sick. Terribly diseased. They came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words. And the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see, they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good. Went about doing good. So we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured. He didn't just heal the sick alone. He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good. And then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. 
any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the spirit himself without measure. So that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The father sent me. I now send you as the father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and there, wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this, just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusade. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. 
We are reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out. 24. Saying, let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual, manipulating his intentions. And Jesus looked at him. This does not reflect the kingdom. And he brought that spirit out. Like it's going to happen to many people. The forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing. Until they leave, all these things are a joke. When the unclean spirit had turned him, he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him. 27, we're reading down to, I think it was 39 or so. I just want us to walk through the ministry of Jesus. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. Let me tell you this. When you command an unclean spirit and it goes, it is a big deal. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Doctors can treat sickness. They can cast out devils. Machines can show an elongated lung or heart, but it cannot show the spirit sitting there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These spirits are living entities. They can hear. They have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at, Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said, our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Habba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. So well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28, and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus and lifted her up and how many, how long immediately. immediately do you know if Jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think is the will of God 
don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact, the Bible says immediately, the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand. And brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now. They brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her something made that uncle call brothers and sisters because that uncle also has relatives somewhere everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him what makes him to leave them and come to you no are we blessed one question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray are you truly tired of the situation you see there's something I think I was sharing with, I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your sister, allow that pain, don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain, 
was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who never run and come to God but you just press one side of your stomach and you just felt ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told a doctor just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay there are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with matchet and stole her phone I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead The same way you have been carrying a certificate, that's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. This is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God, with God, all things, Without him, you are on your own. But when you involve him, and not only involve him, go a step further by letting him lead the way, then your life becomes a wonder. I'm showing you, many of you are surprised. The same surprise was in the Bible. They were astonished. What manner of man is this? Astonished. And then the man, if he's wise, will tell you, look, I'm not alone. Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer, but when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, give, I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick Get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here? 
and take me back like that. There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the same God yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same healer yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same deliverer. I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight. I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer. The one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence. Can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the King of Glory ride over this place. And let me watch the mountain that stands before him. Let me watch Zerubbabel. Oh, no, no. He said, who are thou mountain? Who are thou mountain? Who are thou infirmity? Who are thou delay? Who are thou stagnation before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. your hands I want to pray the Lord is starting tonight with an impartation there is an impartation of the grace for favor this is what the Lord is telling me the grace for favor the grace I'm about to pray for favor Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father, even as you have revealed to me, from this main auditorium to overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve, 
I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Hapa. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now, producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can, you check, let's check our lives. The truth is for many of us, there is no favor. It's not that the helpers are not there. There has to be something on you to bring them. Every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria, not London. Zaria, here. Many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you. Nobody thinks about you. God does not talk to anybody about you. A gentleman, I think one of these, uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays, and he stood to see me after the service, and he said, man of God, my life is hard. Can you help me with some money? And I looked at him, I said, you are not a wise gentleman. I know you need money now. But you should ask yourself, the person giving you the money, where did it come from? The wiser prayer is for favor. I said, let's do an experiment. I told him, I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and he went. Brothers and sisters, 
on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to validate favor, I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts, 10 naira and 100 naira. When there is a demand, life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor, you will be frustrated. And that's how Satan wants to trap men. He will trap you and make your life miserable. Let's release this favor on our families. You have received it for yourself. But let it get to your family. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. My father, every family that is represented here. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a release of favor. Let there be a release of favor. Favor on every family. Favor on every family. Listen. Sometimes, eh? It is not warfare that destroys. It is even how favor works. Favor can kill to make sure that one person rises. Some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there, you must route your success through us. If you attempt to rise without us, you will not rise. I declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be God in that family. Hallelujah. Favor. In one minute, I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Participate. 
Lord, I release favor concerning this job. Pray, I release favor. I release favor. Favor concerning my building project. I release favor. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who are touched of this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they carry the crippled man. I don't deserve the palace. He says, still come. And the king said, you will sit here and eat with me. Let me tell you how you know it is favor. Listen. Favor is not one time. When somebody just says, hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water. What? That's just goodness. Favor is I want to keep blessing you. I want to continue doing this. Many of us, what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor. Someone just appears once and just says, look, I want to help you. And it never happens again. When it is favor, a process is ignited. It keeps following like that. It's true. Study the things in your life. You'll be able to separate goodness from favor. There are things that just happen one time. But favor, favor continues so. I'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you're on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you I want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small I stretch these hands the fire that the Lord put upon this hand in the name of Jesus I release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand Listen, listen, believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought. It's true. It's true. Why does God do these things? To give us rest so we can serve him. Why does God open doors to give you rest? Financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things. You never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life. It's true. You can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat. You are thinking of what to wear. 
But when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone, overflow 2. The overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Overflow two, the overflow by the road. Please, quickly, we have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 Breaking, breaking, 
everyone it's time to command every force every spirit I'm going to pray for you listen listen as I pray for you listen it doesn't matter where you are provided there is a spirit entity that is waging war in your life let me tell you the truth by the God whom I serve as I make this declaration, the words will live like a sword from me and it will come and create that separation. I want you to bring them out. Overflow one, two, three, wherever. In the mighty name of Jesus, the God of Jeshurun, I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny, as you count three, as you count Jesus, at the count of three, let there be deliverance. One. Two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Break it, don't scot of water. Witchcraft, manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I command a separation. Through the greatness of Thy power, shall Thy enemies submit. I decree. I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I announce liberty. Liberty. Bring them out. your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire 
One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a map and I'm seeing all your state. All your state. This is the hand of God. The sword of the spirit going to all your state. Bringing deliverance. There are times that God moves this way. In the name of Jesus I command. Whoever is from that region. May the power of God begin to touch you now. May the power of God begin to touch you now. Complete liberty. Complete liberty. Complete liberty. Overflow three. Please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry. You, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three, I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough, massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now in the name of Jesus, everyone under any kind of oppression, at the count of three, shout Jesus, one, Two, three, supernatural liberty, supernatural liberty, an outpouring of the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people, every season certain things happen. Every September, somebody must die. Every three, three years, somebody married must divorce. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil, let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every cycle over anyone's life. Are you ready to shout Jesus now? At the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One. Two. Get ready. Three. The chain of cycles. Cycles. broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um please this man I don't know who the, this man, yes, please quickly, we are soon going to pray for the sick, I may not have time to prophesy to individuals, I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake, this is what I see in the name of Jesus, I curse that devil, I'm 
not seen a human being, I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God. This I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one. Right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes. That's what I'm seeing. It's happening to people at overflow one. In the name of Jesus, let it be over now. Snakes and scorpions. The mystery, the mystery of snakes and scorpions. He said, I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. Sir, I want to pray for you. I don't know whether you came here for us. You have been but, coming here. Uh, but I was tra I traveled before that I have not been coming. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. If I don't pray for you, the devil is going to kill you. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin. They have already closed you. I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. Be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you. Huh? Yes, uh, is that true? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you. Yes, sir. That thing is a charm. Yes, sir. It's not half it's charm. Yes. Native yes. doctor. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. That's what will even kill you. Yes, sir. It's not going to solve your problem. Yes, sir. The people doing it are well meaning. Yes, sir. But the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it. Yes, and you violate it will destroy you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? You have, you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you. Listen, let me tell you. When you are pressed, we are humans and we can be pressed to the world. Going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction. If Satan gives you tea here, he will hold a knife and stab you at the back. Father, by the mercy of God, I pray for this man. Let him not die. In the name of Jesus, I close the gate of the grave over your life. In the name of Jesus, both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms, in the name of Jesus, we scatter that shrine into pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sir. The Lord perfects you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Something is leaving this lady. Oh dear, she's vomiting. I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something. Agnes. God is not done with that guy or that young man with bloom. Please, if you are not Agnes, don't come here. Please. Your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai. There is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist, in the name of Jesus, because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. 
one, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you. Eh? I love you. And that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree. And that tree is this lady. And something that was planted. And the Lord is saying, uproot it. I uproot this thing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot it now. The spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically. But I'm seeing Benway. Benway. And I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uproot him. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State, Shekete Ketakataliakata, in the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting and uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come, my dear. Let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some... My spirit is heavy to prophesy. But because we have to... I want us to pray for the sick. So that I can just make those declarations. We may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy. But I'm telling you, God wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Who? Agnes. Agnes. Where is she? Abuja. Abuja, sir. Your sister? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her, eh? In the name of, is she married? Huh? In no. the name of uh, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? Come. Boy, come. I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him. This is a small boy. Boy, how are you? The, the boy doesn't even know. But I'm going to pray for him. Samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day. When Eli, he was just an innocent boy. I'm going to pray for him. Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house, Wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But this, this cause of hardship... Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba, huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mama i pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come leave the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but god is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently she'll be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick. Don't allow any nonsense remain in your body, no matter how small. Make sure you insist that it leaves. Make sure you insist that it leaves. We are going to be very fast. Please, we'll be very fast. Now, let me say this. When you stand to receive healing, don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping. Let your heart be open. Are we together? Number two, accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch you. it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because i'm, I'm literally sensing as if i want to throw up is the spirit of prophecy there's there's something that the lord is putting in my spirit to release and that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly so that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus, someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road, their requests are collected. Please, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray by the ministry of the Spirit. Several people serving us contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier, you have taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You make my life so beautiful. My beautifier, you have taken.
Taking away the shame, taking away the pain. You make me just like you, my beautiful young. You are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain. Taking away the pain. Make my life so make beautiful, my, so beautiful. my beautiful young. Taking away the pain, pain. make me just like you. you. Oh, my beautiful, beautiful. you are taking away, taking away the the pain, pain. make me just like you.
Michael Walker, Dolphins keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey, hey, prayers in this place. I want you to believe. Stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. Stretch your hands here. Begin to pray in the spirit. Please make sure make sure everyone's request is here. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, you gave this as a mystery in this house. We have received all kinds of awe inspiring testimonies, testaments of your life, your power, your might, your faithfulness. Lord, in this month of February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation in the name of Jesus Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer 
so Lord I transfer the trust of your people to you the one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus As I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. The Bible says, no weeping endures for a night. It says, but joy comes with the morning. I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say, Lord, I've seen you bless me, but not this dimension. May the God I serve release it to you. Anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job, shakatos kabarakatos yatakata, in the name of Jesus, between now and March miracle service, return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion, and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every 
manifestation of delay in your life. Others move forward, but when it gets to your turn, something just clamps you in one position. Or slow progress. Slow progress is as destructive as delay. I command speed to your life. I speak speed to your life. I prophesy speed to your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life. In the name of Jesus, this is the season where all those doors are closed forever. I pray for those in business here. I speak over it. The grace for multiplication, let it come upon your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives. It may be results for students. It may be something, it may be a mistake of the past. You've seen God correct things in strange ways here. I command supernatural correction for you. For every student here, that the result you are holding is not your real result. I don't care how long. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, we correct it right here. Anyone here involved in any kind of project, building project, whatever major project, you or your loved ones, I decree and declare, the finisher's anointing comes upon that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray over your finances. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. He said, believe in his prophets so shall you prosper. If you truly believe God will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. I give you two weeks from today. In the name of Jesus Christ, that between now and the next 14 days, let something notable happen to your finances. Listen. I don't want you to think as I'm praying, you are thinking, oh, God will use A, B. Leave whoever God will use to him. I'm not talking business. In the name of Jesus, I say it again. Between now and the next 14 days, may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances. Hallelujah. Every gift of the Spirit that you had once seen in your life, and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you. I release that grace over you. I release that grace over you. I release that grace over you. Take that grace now. The grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand, listen, not just through Joshua Selman, in the name of Jesus, those hands that are stretched towards me, I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace to reproduce the miracles in this house. I release that grace, young and old, male or female. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men, you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever needs to make peace with you, I decree and declare, the grace of God compels them to make peace with you. Hallelujah. Whoever has
has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I cleared the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you hallelujah we're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your Bible since last Friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there I command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe 
that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.